Welcome to this moment of prayer hosted by The Upper Room. I am Stefan Brooks, Spiritual Director of The Upper Room Emmaus Ministries. In former times, we gathered in The Upper Room Chapel to pray with and on behalf of the world. However, during this global crisis, we continue to gather together virtually for this moment of prayer. And so I join you from my home in Hermitage, Tennessee today. As staff of the Upper Room and partners with you in this journey, we are honored to have this time of prayer with you. Wherever you may be this day, whether you are alone or with others, marching in the streets, making phone calls from home, feeding children, wondering how you will feed children, know that God is with you, right here and right now. As we spend this time together, please feel free to share your joys and your concerns with us and the Upper Room community. And you may do so by using the comments area below. Let us take a few deep breaths, breathing in the love of God and exhaling any tension we might be experiencing or worry we might have. And now I invite you to join me as we pray together the opening prayer. New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all your creation and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is Luke chapter 18, verses 18 to 30. A certain rich ruler asked him, that is Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this ask, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible to, with man is possible with God. 
Peter said to him, We have left all we had to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. For the past few weeks, as the nation has been experiencing some very tumultuous days, I have had four words running through my mind. We can do better. We can do better. While reading the section from Luke chapter 18, which happens to be my devotional reading for today, it dawned on me that this is exactly what Jesus continually invites those with a desire to follow him to do. He invites us to do better. In this passage, Someone in authority goes to Jesus inquiring about how he might inherit eternal life, how he might better his life here on earth and then live eternally beyond this earthly life. In the first instant, Jesus responds, well, you know the commandments as they are laid out in the law of Moses. Follow them. But the man is not happy. He knows that this legalistic approach to life has not been enough to get him to that place of peace with God, with himself and with others. He knows that he is still missing something. And so Jesus continues and invites him to do better. Because he was quite rich, Jesus said to him, You have to sell all that you have and give to the poor. Then you will have quality life here on earth. And after this, you will live in God's presence always. Beyond inviting the man to get rid of his riches, Jesus was inviting him to divest himself of that which gave him a sense of security because that from which he derived his sense of security was, in fact, an impediment. It was diminishing his ability to see himself and it was blinding him to the plight of those around him. It was keeping him from coming to himself, and it was deafening him to God's call on his life to uplift those who needed uplifting. Recently, Bishop T.D. Jakes led a panel discussion on the issue of racism in America. One of the panelists, a pastor, was in tears as she shared. In essence, he said, I have been a preacher for 20 years and I have refused to address this issue because I was afraid of losing the congregation that my father had passed on to me. And then he said, no more. I cannot do it anymore. I want to pass on a better world to my children. What I saw in that instance, in that, in that instant, friends, is a man who was ready to let go of that from which he derived his sense of security 
in order to respond to a call to contribute to a more just, loving, and caring society. I saw a man who had faced himself and was now willing to embrace something that is much bigger than self. During the past week, I also heard the story of a young African-American pastor who was invited to share his experience of racism with a youth group. In the hour leading up to the event, the organizers requested that he share his content and then announced to him that they were not ready to take the deep dive that he was offering. And they subsequently agreed that the event will be held without him because while they were not willing to lose their congregation, he was not willing to share his feelings about helping, without helping, sorry, he was not willing to share his feelings without helping his listeners explore the roots and various solutions to the problem. That from which we derive our sense of security blinds us and it hinders us in our ability to truly see ourselves and to see those around us. But we can do better. We can do better. Friends, I believe that God is visiting the nation. And I believe that as God visits the nation, God is extending an invitation. An invitation to good Christian men and good Christian women to partner with God to root out the individual and systemic racism that has been plaguing this otherwise great nation for centuries. A plague that has divided the nation, a plague that has been at the origin of the unforgettable civil war, a plague that has caused millions around the world to rebuke this nation a plague that is jeopardizing our national security, a plague that is costing millions of dollars, a plague that is depriving, depriving the nation of the very valid contribution of some of its most brilliant elements. A plague, my friends, that stands prominently in the pantheon of evils that have beset this otherwise great nation. We can do better. God is not only inviting us to do better, but just as a few days after celebrating, but just a few days after celebrating Pentecost, through His Holy Spirit, God is offering to empower us to do better. My friends, my sisters, my brothers in Christ, are you open to partnering with God? As God invites some of our neighbors, some of our family members, some of our colleagues, some of our leaders, to let go of that from which they derive their security, their sense of security, in order to secure a better world, a better nation, a better neighborhood, a world, a nation, a neighborhood in which our sons and daughters of different colors, races, and creeds might walk without fear of losing their lives, might study with the assurance that they will have a fair chance at landing a good job, might sit in a park without having the police called on them, a world, a nation, a neighborhood in which our sons and daughters might be treated justly by the justice system 
no matter what they look like and no matter where they come from. We can do better. As God visits this nation, are you, my friend, open to God's invitation to join in and be an ally, an advocate, an agent of transformation that will help restore goodness to this obviously broken world? We can do better. May I invite you to pray with me the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi that is in the comments section. And this will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, not so much to be understood as to understand, not so much to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we awake to eternal life. Amen. The Lord's Prayer in Unity Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Friends, Thank you for joining us today. And always remember that you are beloved. You are not alone. So go in peace. And may God's peace be with you always. We can do better. Amen.